AIM and ISDX listed UK oil and gas investments is focused on developing oil and gas projects from its portfolio of 11 assets in the Weald Basin in the south of England. UCOG recently announced what it calls the milestone news at its flagship Horse Hill project, gaining the necessary permit to flow test the well. What now? Well, Executive Chairman is Stephen Sanderson and he joins us now. Steve, welcome. Thanks very uh, much. First of, all, first of all, tell us a little bit about, uh, about Horse Hill. Well, Horse Hill, as you've said, is uh, one of uh, 11 assets. I guess it's, um, we regard it as being one of our two flagships uh, together with the Isle of Wight. It's um, located in the southeast of England, just north of Gatwick in the Weald Basin. And I guess people know it for the, the Horse Hill well, which uh, people call the Gatwick Gusher. Um, and I personally, I think that's a really good name for it. Um, we have uh, the area of about 55 square miles in, in those uh, two licenses, in fact, and uh, we have a, a 20, just over 20 percent in working interest in, in the licenses. Um, I think people know, as I said, the Gatwick Gusher, and the, the Gatwick Gusher is, is very important for the company in the sense that um, potentially it's, it's a game changer for us. Uh, we had a, a Portland uh, conventional oil discovery in there which is possibly the largest Portland uh, field in, in the Weald Basin. And perhaps, you know, the game-changing part of it really is what lies underneath the Portland, and that's a very thick sequence of oil bearing shales and limestones that uh, we sort of call tight oil. Well, explain a bit more about this, the difference between the shale and limestone section and which bit you're aiming for, because, as you say, there are different areas that you could potentially end up getting oil from. Yeah, the, um, I think it's people, uh, we use all these strange technical terms, but people need to understand that the, um, the shale and limestone section is, um, is what we call tight oil. Um, and this, this uh, section uh, is about uh, 750 foot thick, and it's an aggregate of various zones. Um, the, the main zone in there is the Kimmeridge clay. Um, and uh, we've had five... Um, independent reports done by uh, Slumberger and Newtech, um, who are world leaders in evaluating um, the oil in place in, um, in such tight oil um, uh, sections. And um, there are, um, uh, in the whole of the, the Weald as such, there's about 120 odd billion barrels in this section over, over the Weald. It's regionally extensive. And uh, we have about eight licenses where this um, is uh, found, and uh, our net is about 16 billion. Um, uh, the actual working interest we have is about four, and uh, we're looking at uh, re potential recovery targets of about five percent. So that could be a couple of hundred million barrels to the company. So very significant. Now you've got this permit to flow test the well. First of all, which part of the well, or is it the wide area that you've got to flow test, or is it just one specific part? Okay, well the, um, the, the permit for, that we got from the Environment Agency is, the, is the sort of the, the key step to actually being able to test the well. And as I said before, what we found to date from the, the studies that um, Newtek and Slumberger have been done is actually the oil in the ground. So. The next step is actually to get the oil to the surface, and hence that's what the, the flow test is for, is to actually test the conventional Portland sand. And there are, there are sort of very similar fields around the basin. There are 13 other producing fields. So this is quite straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to gather reservoir engineering data to basically allow us to assess the commerciality of that field. And if that looks very positive, then we'll, we'll fast track a development on the Portland sand. Um, and then the second part is very much designed to uh, look at the, the Kimmeridge section and, and within that Kimmeridge shale section there are two limestones that are particular of, of interest. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll test uh, both the, the upper and the lower um, and I think people need to understand that um, this is sort of part of a proof of uh, concept um, uh, process that we're going through and what we're trying to do is to establish the presence of uh, movable oil in those um, limestones and get it to the surface and if, if that's successful what that will enable us to do then is to go forward and drill um, another horizontal well uh, and test that stimulate it. it what, what are we talking about in terms of the, the diary here I mean, is this going to be completed within 2016 or is this going to be a longer term project? Than that? Oh no I mean we're, we're 
the, uh, the flow test team is in place, that it's fully planned, we have everything ordered. So we're, we're looking at really doing this in very early 2016. Okay, now if successful, what sort of impact is this going to have on, on the company and for those investors that are in this stock uh, waiting for the, for, the, for the big turning point? Yeah, I think let, let's deal with um, the two, two aspects, the, the Portland and, and the Kimridge. I mean, the Portland, as I said, is, is conventional. Um, it's, it's sort of uh, the same sort of size as other producing fields in the... Um, in the basin, it's actually potentially the largest um, Portland producing uh, potential producing field in the basin, and uh, the bottom line for us is it could give us about a million barrels net to the company, which it, which is nice. It provides us good cash flow to, to fund other things, and then the uh, the Kimridge is um, is essentially that's the game changer. I mentioned all these large billions of barrels, but basically. We are focusing on the, on the limestones and that gives us potentially about 30 to 40 million barrels net to the company. And if we look at the overall uh, section which includes the shales, then potentially for, for our acreage in Horse Hill and, and, and the adjacent uh, blocks, mm -hmm. that potentially gives us something like 200 million barrels net to the company. So very significant. In, in terms of money and, and balance sheet strength when you're approaching this, what funding have you got in place to complete this next stage? Well, uh, for a small company and, and also compared to our peers in the, in the Weald Basin, we're actually very well funded. We're, we're, we're quite well cashed up. We raised six million in the summer. Um, we have a, a ten million drawdown facility, ten million dollar um, drawdown facility. So uh, we, we definitely have um, enough money for this flow test, for the follow-up, for our drilling in 2016, and also we're also using it to uh, look at acquiring further assets in the basin. Uh, okay, let's let's let's. let's ask that sort of same sort of question in terms of the share price. Now, I know you can't talk directly about the share price because yeah. that's set by the market, um, but what is priced into UCOG stock at the moment, do you think? Well, I think, uh, well, I, I, and I would say this, I, I think we're quite undervalued. I think uh, if you look at our other assets, you know, particularly our producing and development assets, we have um, sort of recoverable resources and reserves of about four million barrels. And that, uh, in my mind, the way that we value it internally more than accounts for the, the share price we have. Our market cap is varies between 20 and 30 mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. so, so that underpins it. So therefore, you could say, well, actually, we're, we're seeing no value for what could come from Horse Hill. And I think the, uh, the important thing is, as I've said, that um, we have sort of four, billion, four million in, um, in recoverable resources in conventional fields, but we're looking at an order of magnitude increase for the uh, Kimmeridge limestones and, and two orders of magnitude if we, if we, you know, for the long term for the, for the shales. Okay, final question. I've asked you briefly about 2016. Just give us a couple of uh, milestones that you'd like to see achieved to indicate to investors that you're on track. Well, we'll have the flow test. I think that's positive. We'll actually start to put in a planning application for um, either the development of the Portland Sand. That will be, that will be the, the closest and nearest uh, sort of cash flow uh, objective. We'll be putting in a field development plan for the Mark Wars Wood conventional um, discovery that's further over in the west. And uh, hopefully we'll be adding some more acreage to our portfolio. I Good. think that we are very successful, yeah. Well, look, Steve, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks indeed for giving you some time. Thank you very much. That's uh, Steve Sanderson. He's the uh, chairman, executive chairman of UCOG.